In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Hello everybody, thank you for saying yes, I'm going to keep Sunday holy. And what a great time to return to the Lord with all your heart. That word repent, right? Is that about refinishing the bathroom, repaint, and thin no more, that old joke, right? It's about turning away from sin, step one, and turning... Step two is turning to God. You can try to turn away from sin and then turn into something else. Right? Turning away from sin and turning to God, which is what we do right now in Lent. For the times we have sinned and said yes to temptation, let's tell the Lord we're sorry and come back to Him. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priest shall receive the basket from you, and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, my father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into this country, he gave us this land, flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, when, when I, I am in trouble. trouble. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, my refuge and fortress, in, my, in God in whom I trust. Be, be with, with me, Lord, Lord when, when I am, am in trouble. trouble. No evil shall befall you, nor shall affliction come near your tent. For to his angels he has given command about you, that they guard you in all your ways. Be, Be with, with me, Lord, when, when I am in trouble. trouble. Upon their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the asp and the viper. You shall trample down the lion and the dragon. Be, Be with, with me, Lord, when, when I am in trouble. trouble. Because he clings to me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he acknowledges my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. I will deliver him and glorify him. Be, be with, with me, Lord, Lord when, when I am, am in trouble. trouble. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does Scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days. And when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem and made him stand on a parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hand they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, I want to tell you a story, but before I do, I have to teach you, I have to remind you of something and, and teach you something, okay? So first, freedom. Right here in America, we love freedom, freedom, brave heart, right? Freedom. And we talked about this earlier in the year. Freedom has two aspects to it. Right? It's a freedom from and a freedom for. Right? When people are sick, we want God to free them from sickness so they can be free for life and family. Right? We ha I told you that story earlier in the year about the cardinal when I said, asked him, what is the definition of freedom? Right? And he said, freedom is saying no, that you may say yes. Right? You say no to the bag of chips so you can say yes to living right maybe thinner or healthier, no to the bottle. You could say yes to having life with your family, right? There's a freedom from and a freedom for, and both of those are inherent in, in what the word freedom actually means, right? In America here, we love freedom. All right, let's hit pause on that. If Jesus is going to choose an alcoholic beverage this week, is he going, let's say, he's, you know, he's going to celebrate with his friends a Jewish feast day or something. Is he going to have, is he going to do a shot? Is he going to drink some wine? Or is he going to have a 40? <laughs> right, 40. We hear this 40 in the gospel today, right, for 40 days. What does that mean? Did he not eat for 40 days? So let's hit pause there. Right, 40 in the Bible, for the Jews, 40 is a symbolic number. Unlike us today uh, with English, their language is, has a lot of numer numerological significance, right? Numbers mean more than what the numbers mean. And so 40 can literally mean 39 plus 1, or 41 minus 1. But it actually also has a symbolic meaning. So 40, right? What does 40 mean? It means the appropriate amount of time. Right? So if you asked a Jewish mom in the ancient world, how long should I break bread? They would say 40 minutes. Right? You said, how long is the homily going to be? 40 minutes. Maybe it will be. We'll find out. You'll already know, right? The Jews wandered in the desert how many years? Right? 40 years. That could literally be 39 plus 1, or they wandered for the appropriate amount of time for them to become God's people. Right? It rained in Noah's day, right? It rained for how many days? 40 days and 40 nights. It rained the appropriate amount of time to flood the world. Right? That's what 40 means. It means the appropriate amount of time. So Jesus goes into the desert, and he may have actually fasted for 39 plus 1. Now, you can find YouTube videos of people who fasted and haven't eaten anything for like a year. right? So you can do that. I don't want to do that. I don't even like fasting for a day or three days. But I find it's really helpful when I do. But Jesus fasts for the appropriate amount of time. He goes into the desert for the appropriate amount of time for the mission that he's going to do. To save us, right? And we want to say that Jesus sets us free. Well, hold on. What does he do? He sets us free from the devil. 
free for him, for choosing in freedom Almighty God. Right? And so let's look at the let's look at these temptations. For the for the first message, and sorry, my phone is on, I'll use that in a moment. The first message that we get is like the devil's tempting Jesus. Like, boy, that devil is a creature of pride if he thinks he can be Jesus. So how do you resist the devil? A couple things. In the seminary they taught us sometimes you wake up at nighttime and you have like a like a, 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 an evil sense, right? Like there's a presence of evil around. It could be a nightmare. But it's sometimes you have a dream, and God can use dreams, but sometimes you have like a, a dream or a sense at like three in the morning or something of, of there being an evil presence right, of the devil. That can happen. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen. Right? And what they taught us in seminary is if you ever have like a, a dream of the devil or, or a sense of the devil around, what you're to do is you just say the Hail Mary over and over again, and the devil will leave. Why? Because he can't stand Mary. Mary used her freedom to be free from evil and free for Almighty God. And she is full of grace and she is so humble the devil can't stand it. Right. I want to make a joke that Mary's like the devil's mother-in-law, but I don't think that's fair to mother-in-law's, right? Mary is so much, Mary's great, right? And she is so full of grace, the devil runs from her. And so I found that that has worked in my life, so that's some basic advice. But what happens here, Jesus is being tempted by the devil. The devil in his pride thinks he can tempt him. And what happens? Jesus beats the devil back every time he's knocking on heaven's door trying to tempt Jesus, right? Jesus is the way to heaven, right? The devil's trying to tempt him, and at the first moment the temptation comes, Jesus beats him back. He says, no, puts him away, right? If you don't want to go to New York, you don't get on a train to New York, right? Very simple. If you don't want to go to Disney, you don't get on an airplane to Disney. If you don't want to be a person who commits a, a big sin, then you don't even flirt with temptation. Right? You are free. Jesus sets you free. You don't have to say yes to temptation. You can say no in the beginning. Right? And that's what Jesus does. Now, he's showing you and me how to fight. It's easier to resist sin at the beginning than it is if you let it take root. Right? You can pull a weed up easy, but once it takes root, it's going to be harder to pull it up. Same with temptation. Right? The more you entertain it, the more roots it gets. Okay. This last temptation, this last one seems kind of crazy. It's going to be related to the world and the story I want to tell you. Right, so the devil takes Jesus and he puts him on the top of the temple, the highest point of the temple, top of the Empire State Building, imagine. Right, and he says, if you're the Son of God, throw yourself down. How is that a temptation to Jesus? Is he tempting Jesus to give up, to kill himself? Like, think about it. How is that an actual temptation? We're going to get to it. Because then the devil quotes scripture. I always say to Christians, especially Catholics, be careful if you get into these scripture-throwing debates. Sometimes other Christians want to fight other Christians and throw Bible verses at each other. And like, that's how the devil fights. So be careful if you do that. You've got to use reason too. Right? And so the devil says, right, quoting the scripture, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and they're going to support you with their hands, lest you th uh, dash your foot against a stone. How is that a temptation to Jesus? Throw yourself down. Right, plummet to your death. Jesus says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. What is that even about? Tell us, Father Dave, I'll tell you. Is the devil an angel, yes or no? Say yes. The devil is tempting Jesus to force him to listen to Jesus. What? The passage that the, the devil quotes is, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they're going to support you lest you fall. Right? The devil has Jesus at the top, and he's tempting Jesus to throw himself down, because if he throws himself down, the devil's going to be forced like, to catch him. And he's tempting Jesus to use force, to force the devil against the devil's will to do this thing, to compel him. He's forcing Jesus to mandate that the devil save him. And what does Jesus do? Does he do that? He says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. He doesn't force the devil. He, as crazy as it is, he respects the devil's freedom. Because that's how God is. There's no one freer than God. And God makes his children, and the angels are, the angels are God's children too. He made them before he made us. 
He gives them freedom. And he doesn't take it away. And he gives that to us too. And the freedom that he gives is so that you and I can freely choose to align our life with him. He's not going to force us to do that. He doesn't force anybody to do that. He doesn't even force the devil to do that. Okay. So, imagine a slave ship. Right? And there are these African tribes that are fighting each other, and because of their local disputes, they capture each other as prisoners. One tribe captures another, and then they're selling those prisoners to white slave traders on the coast of Africa. And this one captain comes over with his slave ship, right? And he says to his, uh, you know, I don't know, he says to one of his soldiers on the ship, hey, take those slaves and chains and bring them on board. And that sergeant that he, he, the captain talked to says, no. And the, the captain says, what do you mean, no? Go take them and bring them on board. And that captain says, or the, the sergeant says, I will not. And then the captain comes and he like confronts him and the sergeant starts singing. Silent night, holy night. And the, the captain is like, what? What are you doing? And he keeps singing, all is calm. And the, sergeant, uh, the captain goes to hit him and he blocks the hit, but he doesn't punch the captain back. The captain is furious, and the captain says to another soldier, give me your gun, your musket. And that other soldier on, on the ship says, round John Virgin, and refuses to comply. And the slaves are, are, are wondering what's going on, and then one of the other ship members starts singing Silent Night, and he goes over and releases the chains of the slaves. What would happen then? Well, that didn't happen, Father Dave. That's a, that's a crazy story. Yeah, but it happened in 1914, right? Everybody knows this story, the Battle of the Bulge and Silent Night, right? That the, there they were on, on Christmas Eve and these, right? The, the Germans were fighting the, the French and the English and the Belgian soldiers in, in the mud of trench warfare. And then what happens? The Germans start singing Christmas carols. Steely knock. I don't know how to speak German, right? They start singing Silent Night. And then they sing, and then the English start singing. Right? Graham Williams, the 5th uh, London Rifle Brigade, says this, First the Germans would sing one of their carols, and then we would sing one of ours. Until we all started up, O come all ye faithful. And the Germans immediately joined in singing the same hymn to the Latin words, Adeste fideles leti. And I thought, well, this is the, the a really most extraordinary thing. Two nations both singing the same carol in the middle of a war. Silent night. And then what happens to those soldiers? They got out of their trenches. They met in this no man's land of the, of the mud and the muck and the frozen dirt, the dead bodies and the carnage of war. And they, and they wished each other Merry Christmas. They made a little Christmas tree. They, would, they wanted to give each other things, so they, they gave each other buttons, like shiny baubles, because they didn't have presents or wrapping paper. They gave each other bubbles and, or, uh, buttons and cigarettes and chocolates, and they showed pictures of their sweethearts back home, and they didn't fight, and they played some soccer games, and they celebrated that Christ had come. And what was happening in all of that is they used their freedom to say no, to be free from fighting free for peace and solving a problem. I'm getting teary-eyed here remembering. But that actually happened. Now, last week, and, and well, you may know this too, like they had to rotate those soldiers out because they, they didn't want to fight each other. Last week, we talked a little bit about the danger of media. Right? And Jesus says to those who, who are given much, much is required, right? And so, you know, people can get absorbed in it. And the media, especially the news, very much wants to take someone's suffering and present it to you as entertainment. And that is an evil path for you and me to be drawn down, right? To start watching someone suffering as entertainment, that is evil, right? And so be careful. Be careful. All right, that being said, let's say you decide to put on the news, 
Right? Jesus says to those who are given much, much is required. And so you know that if you hear of someone experiencing hardship, that you have an obligation to help them. Right? So if you hear and you put on the news and you're, you're seeing people suffering over there in Ukraine, well, then what does that mean for you? That means you have an obligation to help them. Right? And so you're going to watch the news and you're going to say a prayer for the people that you're hearing about. Because you sitting in a room having bad feelings and anxiety and stress and being concerned about something bad doesn't do anything to help the people who are experiencing a tornado or a hurricane, a famine, an invasion. So there you are. You put on your TV or you put on your YouTube news or wherever you watch the news. And you're one of, these, one of our Catholics here, so you know that you have an obligation to pray. So you're going to pray for the people you're going to hear about. And there on the news you hear, there was a Russian captain who was being told by his generals to keep invading. And as he was rolling his tanks in, the people of a town of Ukraine all started singing, Silent night. And they put down the free weapons that they were being given by all these other nations, and they put down their guns. Oh, holy night. And this Russian captain was like shocked at what he saw, and he ordered his troops to roll the tanks in, and the tank commanders took up to him. Round John Bird, and nobody fought. And the word got back to the higher ups and they said, well, then move other troops in. And all those troops did the same thing. And you had, imagine, like you watching that on the news and you have the silent night rebellion. The silent night revolution. Where people decide to use their freedom to not fight and to come together and try to solve problems by talking and listening and not by forcing that's crazy, Father David. No, that actually, what I just told you, is actually possible. Nah, Father David, that's a fantasy. Jesus says at the Mass, we're going to say it later, right? Peace I give you. My peace I leave you, peace I give you. Not as the world gives. Right? The world gives peace by, like, some stronger person coming in and saying, ooh, ooh, ooh. Like, you know, you all stop now. And I'm, I have bigger guns and nuclear weapons and power, and, and you all listen to me or I'll smash you. That's not how Jesus does it. He doesn't force people. He shows us a way and invites you and me up to align our life with his. And that's the peace of the, of the kingdom of heaven, that everybody in heaven is free. They're free from sin because they chose, you know, they say, I'm, I'm done with sinning. They're free to love one another and God because Jesus gives us that capacity. And they say, yes, and teach me how to do that, Jesus, that I can do that well and always to everybody, even people who I perceived as my enemies. Jesus even respects the freedom of the devil. And what happened to the apostles, right? They, they were told by the state, by the Roman Empire, you have to worship at the, the religion of the state. And the apostles said, no. We're going to tell you what happened on a silent night when God, Almighty God, came as a baby, as one of us. And the state said, well, then we'll kill you. And the apostles said, well, that's, you kill us, he'll raise us up. We have life. You can knock us down and we're going to get up again. And God raised them up. And what would eventually happen hundreds of years later is eventually the emperor of the Roman Empire would worship Almighty God in Jesus Christ. Freedom is being free from and freedom for. And Jesus sets us free from the devil, free for building his kingdom. And this is why, as Catholics, we always respect freedom. We invite people to align their life with Christ. And that's what we're doing in Lent. We turn away from sin, we turn towards God, and we invite all people to do the same. We don't force them. We don't want to force the whole world to become Catholic. We want to tell them the good news and invite them into this higher way of living. Why do we do that? Because on a silent night, a holy night, Almighty God came into this world to set us free. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's raise our prayers to Almighty God. For Pope Francis, bishops and priests, may God continue to bless their ministries as they lead his flock. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For judges, may the Holy Spirit grant them wisdom in making just decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who feel unworthy of God's forgiveness, may the Lord open their hearts to the gift of mercy that he is eager to bestow. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those in our faith community, may Christ the Lamb lead us in a spirit of penance through this Lent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, may Jesus welcome them into the eternal joy of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the end to the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace in the Ukraine and around the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for those petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that God may give us the fortitude to fight off temptation at its onset. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling in their relationships, especially those who are called to the vocation of marriage. May God bless them and help them and open their eyes to each other and his calling. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those people who are displaced by what's happening over there in the Ukraine. So we pray for, for peace, but for everybody who is uh, displaced, that they may find welcome. And that God may bless all the families over there who have opened up their home to refugees. May God bless all of them and, and bring about peace and a return to home and, and safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that God may hear the prayers of all of us who are suffering and offering up our uh, prayers and hardships uh, for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, turn toward us and hear the prayers you inspire us to ask, for we ask them on your day in this time of turning to you through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, <clears throat> our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, 
Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mysteries, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ would be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Martha, St. Therese, St. John Paul II, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Cragley is right here. Peace be with you, Cragley. And we also pray, uh, it's a good time to say, you know, and pray for peace, especially around the world right now. Um, that we all choose the peace that Christ gives experience the goodness of that. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and to strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hold on, we have a special guest here. Come here, kiddo. So on Ash Wednesday, those ashes on our forehead, where did they come from, Diane? The palm from last year. The palm from last year. That palm was put to a fire, and that fire transformed that palm inside and out. And the fire of the Holy Spirit is supposed to transform us, right, Cragley? This Lent. So Cragley hopes that your Lent kicks ash. Wah, wah, wah. The Lord be with you. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. May bountiful blessings, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. One of your favorite places, Cragley? Yeah. Go get it, Crags. Go get it. I know. That one didn't go in the ocean. Let's try it again. Try it again. Where is it? Ready, Cragley? Go get it, Crags. Whoa. <laughs> get that book. Get it, Cragley. Good girl. Good girl, Cragley. Good girl. Good girl. That's a good dog. Good Crag. That's cold water. God of our, of our 